divers enjoy a good boat show, especially the larger shows that have lots of options. But the question is, will you get a better deal by attending a boat show versus going through dealers or one of the online options? And is it worth your time to attend? Stay tuned as I'll answer these questions after visiting the Seattle show, as I learned some key insights by talking with several of the boat and accessory manufacturers. And even though I've been in the boating space for a while, there were several new things to see and some interesting conversations with various boat brands, which I'll show you throughout this five part video series. This is what we'll cover in part one. Be sure to watch till the end, and I'll let you know what kind of discounts I was able to find here at the show, and the overall market conditions for buying a boat as to whether this is a good time to buy. Welcome to another episode of Cali on the Water. Hi, I'm Eric, the founder of the Direct to Boater brand, and host of Cali on the Water and Life Across the Sea channels. This video will continue on with our Founder Series, as I just returned from Seattle, Washington, attending the boat show there. I'd like to start off with a question that would help other boaters watching this video series. If you've attended a boat show in the past, which shows did you find the most valuable? And which shows do you plan to attend in the future? Please let me know in the comments section as we would all really benefit from your feedback. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it helps others to find this content and be able to see your comments about attending boat shows in your area. I've attended boat shows from coast to coast, including the Miami show, which is now the largest boat and yacht show in the world. It has combined the Miami boat show with the Miami yacht show and both of them together form six separate locations, which occurs in February each year. The Seattle show is the largest on the West Coast. This episode will highlight things to see at the Seattle show and some of the deals and the new insights that I came across after talking with boat manufacturers. The show features the latest in boat design, marine technology, and boating accessories. The show was held in two locations, the Convention Center at Lumen Field, where the Seahawks play, and the Bell Harbor Marina for the larger seagoing boats close by. There are over 300 exhibitors here at the show, and it's one of the largest boating shows in North America. Boating is an integral part of the Pacific Northwest's deep-rooted nautical culture. The mix of boats and materials is quite different in the Northwest than many other markets. It's common to see logs in the open ocean here, so it is a risk that must be considered. There are hundreds of boats of all types, from fishing to wakeboarding and everything in between here. Here are some classic boats, including this 1927 Hacker Craft that is a 28 foot with a Mer Cruiser 350 engine. Here's an old Garwood. And this one is a 1955 Aristocraft 14 foot torpedo. With a matching 1955 Mercury Mark outboard. Here's some of the unique things found here at the show. An electric hydrofoil by Candela 100% electric hydrofoil. That's interesting how this comes down. You can see how the hydrofoil drops down and turned away. Let's take a look underneath. Interesting setup. 
you know, with all electric, a lot less controls. Look at that. Another part of the hydrofoil system, you see these two. And the head's actually, that's an odd place, it's actually underneath here. Right there in the middle. Never seen that before. That's what the top part of the boat looks like. So it does have the stairs to come up and go through to the, to the bow. Yeah, totally different concept. Seatbelts, you don't see that very often. Here too. And that's interesting, just go straight off the back. I would think that's a little problematic. This looks more like a prototype to me, but closer look at the foil. It's gonna drop down when underway. As this is a new idea in the boating industry, as there is discussion how foils will be able to be used in recreational boating. We also saw these foils, and they were used behind ski and wakeboarding boats. Let's hear from a representative about them. Hey guys, I'm Brooks Wilson. We're at Bakes Marine at the Seattle Boat Show and got some of the new wake foils down here. Uh, right here is our Ronix 727 setup with a shift mast. This is really your intro to foiling setup. The adjustable height mast makes that barrier to entry a lot smaller. It makes learning a breeze and spend way more time foiling than you do falling. The shorter mast allows you to get up and ride this wing here. Uh, and, and this is ridden behind the boat and that wing creates lift and allows you to fly above the water. That feeling of flight is, is really sensational and the sport of wake foiling has really taken off in the last couple of years and this Ronix shift setup uh, really makes that barrier to entry a whole lot easier. On the upper end of that, we have our Mod 84 uh, with our shadow carbon setup. This is a full 100% carbon fiber setup with a lot more higher aspect front weight. Now this is a more uh, advanced foil for behind the boat that allows you to do more pumping, a lot more carving, transferring um, to waves beyond the boat uh, in a really good high end setup. So whether you're just getting out and want to try that shift setup or want to try that shadow carbon, uh, the Ronix setups are absolutely incredible for behind the boat. We took a look at the outboards lineup. Here is the Suzuki outboards lineup, starting with the 300 horse. Comes with a five year limited warranty. I know Yamaha usually starts with three, so 115 horse. It looks like they start at about 825 bucks for the two and a half horse. And then go on up to 1600 for the six, 3700 for the 20. And then a pretty big jump here for the 30 at about 5,500. Here's the V8, 300 horsepower, Mercury Verados. Amazing how big these things are getting. Here's a good look with the top off. Four stroke engine. And it's interesting to see how big these are getting all the way up to 600 horsepower in a V12 format. The larger outboards are increasing in popularity due to easy access and the ability to keep them out of the water from a corrosion standpoint. I mentioned at the beginning of the video about potential discounts available here at the show and the overall buying environment. It's an interesting mix as discounts vary by manufacturer depending upon inventory levels and their willingness to cut a deal at the show. Of course, they're trying to sell you the floor models, but that's why they take space here in the first place is to sell boats at the show. You can always order one from the factory to your specs, but you're very likely to pay more and have a lead time. I think it's really worth your time to attend to see these new models, get the information on the boats, ask your questions, and especially on the warranties, as they often get extended here as an incentive to buy. So, if you're ready, buying at the show could be a good option depending upon your circumstances. Yamaha, for example, was offering an extra two years of warranty on certain large outboards that were bought here at the show as part of some of the boat packages. So it depends upon the boat brand as far as the discount goes. 
Some brands were discounting much more than others. But that said, I did hear that now may be a good time to buy, as some of the manufacturers have now overbuilt inventory. Since they ramped up after the COVID pickup in boating, and sales are now down as much as 20% at some of the manufacturers. That kind of makes sense, as sales were up as much as 30% the first few years after COVID, so it's likely it would correct. I did come across some additional information that you should consider, though, before making your next boat purchase that could really make a difference deciding if a new boat is your best option right now. I'll share that important information in part five, which is the last video in this series. Stay tuned for part two, where I'll cover additional interesting things to see here at the show and begin displaying various boat brands, which will continue through the rest of the series. Here's the agenda for part two, the next in this five part series. Thanks for watching and just click on the link for the part two video.